I'm really excited to be joined by a DJ and producer who's been released on uh, some of Electronic Music's biggest and best labels, I think, uh, such as Cadenza, Cecile, and Running Back. And now we're going to, I guess, talk a little bit about DJing, uh, Tractor, his DJ setup, and uh, where things go from here. So please put your hands together for Robert Dietz. Thank you. So thanks for coming. How's AD so Thanks far? Thanks for inviting me. Good, actually. Yeah, really enjoying it. We arrived on Wednesday already. I played for a Pan Pots party at the Chicago Social Club. We had a good time. We hung out at the tractor cookery, oh, yes. ate, made, met friends, and yeah. Nice one. So this is essentially just a two-deck setup, right? Do you want to talk us through how, um, how it works? The, the thing, what, what I love about, um, about uh, Tractor and, 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 and the software is this, the, the possibilities you have, with the, the flexibility. And um, it totally depends on, on the setup. If I play in a, in a really small uh, environment, a small room, uh, like let's say 200 capacity club, um, I like to play as basic as possible, which means one tur uh, two turntables and that's it. Two channels, you mix one track into each other, you let the music speak for itself, you know? I think, in, 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 in especially in those situations, it, it's my personal opinion, if you overload the music, it, it's, it just, it's just too much, you know? It's this, there are certain situations or environments where the music should speak for itself. You know, of course, there's always a question of like re remixing on the fly, um, doing something really special. But I'm like, uh, I like the purity in this moment and let the music speak for itself. So I'm just using two tracks, two channels. And I would get totally bored just pressing play and sync every five minutes when the track is over. You know, what do you do during the rest of the time? You know, so um, that's why I still use the turntables in, uh, in this process and or in this uh, basic set up yeah but, and there are other times where maybe you would move on to things exactly the, if, if you play in in, in, in in on bigger venues on bigger stages and um, you're able to bring a little bit more energy into it you know then I start to um, I mean I always have a third channel uh, for for a cappellas but I use a third channel for loops and then the fourth channel for for the remix deck, which you can control with the F1, which is uh, as well bringing the thing to a next level with adding your some loops you you took from your own tracks, you know, like for example as well vocals or um, like percussion loops you produce in the studio, you cut them and you can like add them on the fly and remix the music, the actual track you're playing right now. Yes, yeah, so you do that as well. You actually sample what you're playing, loop it up. Do exactly. Stuff, yeah. yeah. So wh where would you like to see that go? I mean, you mentioned that you're kind of, you, you love being able to mix on the fly, keeping things beat match, otherwise you have nothing to do. But yeah, you're kind of dipping into the remix world. I mean, which way do you see it going for you personally? Um, f I'm really happy with the setup right now I have, and I, I don't think I would change anything. I don't want to miss using the turntables especially as I still like to play in, in this uh, small environments where I just want to, you know, like mix the very most basic way. Um, and um, the possibilities I have right now already with adding those, those uh, synced remix channels and maybe a synced loop on a third channel is for me like a perfect setup and I, I wouldn't change anything uh, with that or I don't, I don't see where it could go for me in the future at the moment because yeah. I'm really happy. It was interesting to see you come from an old-school approach. I just wanted to get your take on, do you think that producers being forced, well not forced, but you know, they have to DJ now and DJs having to produce is actually harmful for both production and DJ? It's a, that's a very difficult subject. Um, the, it's totally right. Now, the, the thing is, you, you won't get hurt as a DJ when you're not putting out any productions. You can't produce and focus on your productions um, when you have to uh, have a full-time job um, and you need to make money. You don't make money with productions anymore, so you need to go on tour. I mean, back in the days, for example, uh, a band, they went on tour to promote their album. Now they put out an album to go on tour. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like this. I had no idea about that uh, I would ever be able to make a, a living out of it, you know? It was never an intention to um, produce music now to have more DJ gigs. It was more like, I want to know how this works out, you know? I want to like, try it on my own. 
and then all of a sudden you were a able to to produce a track, you know, to finish a track, and you showed it to friends, and friends were starting labels at this moment. They were like, "Hey, we really like that. Let's put it out. You know, let's keep it in the family, and let's do something together." And that's how everything started in Frankfurt. And that was on Ableton as well. That was on Ableton. Yeah, I told you earlier. I started on Ableton. I tried Logic. Just doesn't doesn't do it for me. <laughs> Couldn't work it out. Um, and for me, Ableton is like the perfect production tool. Um, it's uh, super easy to use, it's plug and play. And how do you think uh, your DJ career informed those early productions? Do you think that you sub subtly had a, an ear for arrangement, what's going to work on the dance floor from your DJing days? Um, no, it was more intuitive. It was totally intuitive. Uh, at the beginning, I, I was really, I was as well, it, it was another process of producing music at the beginning because you were like totally free in your mind. You had no you know, pressure or anything that people are expecting something from you. So it was a kind of like infantine way of like trying things out, you know. So there was, uh, at the beginning, I had no idea how to like make a proper arrangement with like a building and, and breakdown and everything. And of course, then over the years, la like I started to understand like how you should actually set up a track that it works on the dance floor or it works better on the dance floor. And do you have any tips for that production or arrangement wise? No, oh, just how you feel. I think you should always like trust your feeling because when you overproduce something, you know, when you like try too hard to like have the breakdown at the right moment and like build up the the the, the drop in again, and this is something sometimes which is uh, which doesn't feel really natural, you know. Um, I think the best breaks in my tracks they were happening just because I was like sitting on my at back then at my MIDI control and just cutting out things and then all of a sudden I pressed something and brought everything back in and So is that how you work? You like jam things out in the studio, try and keep it as live as possible? Yeah, definitely. I, I I'm not I always separate between an like a real artist and a producer. The producer has like an idea in his mind that he, he can actually work on it in the studio and recreate it exactly how he had it in mind or recreate something else he listened to before and I'm more like of an uh, yeah jamming artist who has like inspiration he has ideas but he's I'm going to the studio and just like switch everything on and start to play around record and after a couple of time or uh, uh, after some time magic is happening or sometimes not and that's how I how I work huh? so how does the track start for you then I mean is it just do you have a template in Ableton or is it yeah is it that, I have a template over like a couple of channels of um, um, like how I use my summing mixer, which means like I I have it, uh, between I, I sort it between like kick, highs, percussions, vocals, whatever synthesizers, and then I, rec I have like of, as well a template for all my machines where I can record everything like straight away, and then do the arrangement later. And you send MIDI from Ableton to your hardware, and then just tweak stuff. Yeah, exactly. And is there any kind of tips you have for, I mean, do you prefer that, when you listen to a track, do you feel like you can tell how it was made? Do you ever think, oh, they've dragged I can't even tell you how I made on my own tracks. <laughs> Honestly, it's like sometimes you sit there and you go through your back catalog um, because you're like, uh, you might want to play one of your tracks again in your DJ set. And I'm listening to my tracks on Beatport. So the problem is that I don't even have most of my tracks because they're like lost on some hard drives. And so you have to buy your own music. Um, <laughs> Oh, but so it's okay at least. <laughs> Did you buy a couple of thousand Benny chance? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not trying yeah, to push my out. tracks in the in the beatport just by buying them by myself. Um, no, but sometimes you go through your back catalog and you're like, what the fuck? How did you do that? I, I would love to go back to the state of mind to recreate what, what... But this is what I said earlier. It's like magic is happening, you know? You don't even know what you're doing. You're in a kind of like... In a flow um, where there's no really, there's not no sense or no no sharp thinking. You're just doing something. You're jamming, and then something is happening. And and is it the same for your DJ sets? Is it very? There's no. You don't think I always play these two tracks together. I always no, that. never, never. I never play the same tracks together. Actually, I have a collection. I mean, you can see um, the way I, I do my playlists. Um, can, maybe we could take a, a deeper look at your the way you do your playlist because that's a. <laughs> Everyone's different. I think it's always interesting to see inside well, the crate. The, um, um, the thing is that I have, of course, my folders where I put like all the new stuff I get, and then from those folders I try to, uh, yeah, sort it between like deeper music. Um, Jack and Chunk is, uh, I think, it, the name. 
says it all. Driving is like the more energetic music um, groove, of course, and then Action Jackson is a folder. <laughs> Where there's the music, yeah, they're just the tracks which are working, you know, they work well on the dance floor. And um, of course, I use as well the rating system most of the time to as well then in between those folders give a little bit more detail. Because you come from that traditional background, your setup's quite traditional. Um, a lot of things are changing right now in, in the DJ booth. And where, where do you stand on the kind of, I mean, I don't, again, I don't want to get into the sync button discussion. <laughs> But, uh, we, hey, which is totally fine if, if, if you guys feel like um, in doing this because you want to like really um, use the software to, to its fullest and use it with four channels and then of course you sync everything because you can really like remix uh, the, the, the music you're playing um, right in time. You know, it's, it's nothing wrong about syncing music. I just would personally get bored if I just play with two decks and playing plus and sync after uh, five minutes and the track is over, you know? So, there's, it's totally fine to use the sync button. But you still think you sh everyone should learn to beat match prior yeah, to using yeah, it? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I've, of course you don't have to, but I think it, to under, really understand as well rhythms and, and beat matching music, um, you, sh you should definitely do that. And understand as well the harmony between two records, you know? Yeah. So where do you, where do you see it going then? I mean, We've got the new S8 from Tractor, uh, from Native Instruments here, and uh, the new flagship without the jog wheels, as we were discussing on Friday. But um, I just want to ask you a little bit about where you see it going. I mean, when new DJs come along, uh, they're actually, they don't, you come from the vinyl background, you saw Sven Vath and people playing like that. They're seeing this software, new DJs, like 15, 16 year olds. So they wouldn't actually understand that what, what, what was behind it. So the fact that jog wheels are missing, it's kind of like a statement to say, you know, this is the future. I totally understand and I get what they're, what they're doing there and I think it's a great idea to have a controller with everything included, especially for people being interested in using everything at the same time, which means machine, the remix deck, um, three other channels or even like four channels. Um, it's, a, it's a great solution to have everything compact on, on, on one thing, you know, and you don't need a mixer in, 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 the, in the club anymore. You have everything with you, even though I think it's a little bit too big. Just don't check it in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Don't check it in, because then you're really lost um, if you don't have it with you. Um, but yeah, of course, the future is totally going to the direction of, of having the software doing everything for you. Yeah. 